Hey guys, welcome to Into Fly Fishing. My name is Pierre Joubert and today we're going to look at how to tie a micro bugger. Uh, the material that you'll need is a jig hook. Here I'm using a mush 6432 in a size 14. Uh, for the bead, I chose a fluorescent orange 3mm bead. I just store them in a little um, container like this. 3mm slotted bead uh, and tungsten um, just to get the fly down as quickly as possible and give it as much action. For the tail I'm using a little marabou feather, black marabou feather. You can tie this fly in any color so you can choose any color that you want to. For the thread I'm using my trusty Semperfly Nano Silk 50 denier in white so I'll just color it with a permanent marker when I uh, whip finish the fly. On the tail itself, um, after I've tied in the marabou, I'll just use some black um, flashabou. Uh, for the body of the fly, any black dubbing will do. Um, I use a dubbing material that has a little bit of blue flash incorporated into it. It just gives the fly something else. But any dubbing will do. And for the hackle just behind the bead I'm using a little hen um, neck. I'll use one feather and I'll show you how to prepare that as well. So that's all the material you'll need. Um, you can also to seal the fly um, I'm going to use Silly Hansen's hard as nails. So that's all the material you'll need for the tools obviously a vise. Uh, you don't really need a rotary vise for this fly, um, a normal vise will do. A bobbin holder for your thread, a pair of scissors. Uh, I use a little piece of velcro just to comb the um, dubbing out to make it more buggy. A whip finishing tool, a bodkin. Always handy, little handy tool that um, I'm going to use to apply the Silly Hansons to the fly. And then, as I mentioned earlier, a permanent marker just to color the thread. So without further ado, let's start tying the fly. So I'm going to take this fly out. This is just a sample. Pop it there. And then I'm going to choose a hook from the packet. Now this fly you can tie in sizes ranging between 12 and 18. I don't think going smaller than that would really help you. Um, it's basically a woolly bugger but the addition of the um, jig hook and the slotted bead um, and the hackle that's in front really gives this fly a um, excellent excellent action in the water. So Okay so i am just pop that hook in there for for now. Um, you'll see that I have a slotted tungsten bead right here. It's got a hole in the one side, a small hole uh, in that side right there. And then on the opposite side you'll see that it's slotted. If I can just show you that. Like that, it's got a big slot. So this allows you to add the bead and then the bead will go and sit right here on the let me show you with a pair of scissors. It will sit right up against the um, eye of the hook. So that will give the um, fly an uh, off-centered weight which gives it that great action and it will also allow the fly to ride hook point up which is also another great way of fishing this um, hook. Oh, this fly is in a general nymph rig so this allows you to do that without snagging to the bottom. So you attach the, or you slide the bead onto the hook with a small hole first. So I'm going to pop that in there like so. This you will normally do um, with the hook out of the vise, but I just wanted to show you. So once that is done, I'm just going to slide it around the bend like so. Place it back in the vise. So what you want to do is ensure that the hook point and the barb, if you have a barbed hook, is exposed. You'll use that as a reference. 
and that the shank is um, level and also that the hook is secured um, nice and tightly. Okay, so now just you'll see that the bead doesn't go all the way to the hook point. So what happens is we just turn it around and flip it forward like that. You'll see now the weight is off center, which allows the fly to ride hook point up. So now we're going to attach the thread to the hook, like so. Cut off the excess. So the first part of the thread base is we want to lay a thread base to just behind the bead to you'll see what happened there is I'm just going to pick up the bead it moved slightly so that's where you want you want to firmly secure that bead as far forward as possible so with that I'm just building a thread dam behind the bead just to secure it in place So that's what we want. That bead will go nowhere now and it will stay positioned in the right way. So now we can just wrap our thread back all the way back. By the way, this is also a great taper you'll see for a standard polygon. You can also follow our video or watch our video on the polygons that we did. So this is a great taper for that. Um, and uh, from there on you can really build a nice tapered polygon. Um, okay, so now we're ready to tie in the marabou tail. So as this is a very small fly, we won't be using a big clump like that, um, like you do on normal willy buggers. Just select a couple of fibers. So a small feather like this can really go a long way. pulled out a couple there you'll see really just that's all you need that's about 10 fibers or what so that obviously will reduce to a very thin little moving body um, when it gets wet so then I'm just measuring the tail to be just longer than the body like that so that's fine I'm transferring that to the back of the hook I left my thread before I tie that in, I'm leaving the thread to intercept the um, the bulb. That's where I'll stop the thread base. So I'll transfer that back and with a pin strap secure it in place. And then I'm just going to wrap forward. There. Then I'm going to cut off the marabou. Just cover that. That's what you want. So I'm going to take my thread back halfway, like that, and leave it there. Now take uh, your flashaboo and cut off one one fiber, like so. Now fold it in half. And when it's folded in half, you take the loop that you formed, that's in my hand there, you place it over the hook, like so, and you pull up, and I start locking it in place while pulling backwards. And before getting to the final position, I splay them out on either side of the tail, and I pinch them in place, and I secure them, like so. Now I pull them up again and I just trim them to the same length, about the same length as the tail. If they're slightly longer or shorter, that's fine. This little black flash section gives the fly a nice lifelike appearance, especially when the light sun hits the flash aboo. But as I always say, this flash is really optional on many, um, on many pressurized water systems try and really be subtle with your flash this black flash is really perfect um, but don't when you're fishing when you're fishing really pressurized water systems that, that see a lot of a lot of flies going through them and a lot of anglers 
try and um, stay away from bright colored flesh and usually usually the fish will will really um, react negatively to to the to the flesh right at this stage we can do the dabbing so we're going to use this black dabbing that I that I chose so that'll be too much for now so I'm going to select slightly less that's more than enough I'm gonna pull down the thread and just form a dabbing noodle on this fly oh, on the thread you'll notice that I didn't use thread wax that's because I want the body to be quite buggy I don't want to form a really slender nymph like body and after every couple of turns I just Turn the dubbing again just to make sure that it doesn't unravel too much. We'll comb it out as we go. Right, just attach more. You'll see that I needed more. That's fine. You can always add more dubbing as you go. Right. tighter like so then I'm going to pull back all the fibers right there now I'm going to take that little piece of velcro if you have velcro a comb or whatever a little brush just comb out a little bit I like it buggy I also I also found that on many of the um, just want to cut that off right there Many of my used flies seem to work better than the new flies. That's because this bugginess really seems to attract the fish. So that's what you want, a little buggy body like that. So now to prepare the hackle. So we have the, we have the um, hen hackle right here. Um, so we'll select a feather. I'm gonna pull the feather and I'll show you which one I chose. I'm gonna use one that's slightly slightly longer fibers. That's it. So we're gonna use that right there. And now what we do is we pull back all these soft fibers to remove them until we are left with that. And you'll see that to the camera facing now is the sort of better side of the feather, the more the better colored side. And then on the opposite side, you'll have a duller color. So when, you fa when the um, feather is facing, the good side of the feather is facing you, on the left hand side, I'll remove the fibers. Let me just show you what I did there. Just want to do it perfectly. Right. Like so. Now, very carefully, without pulling the fibers out, I'm just splaying the fibers so that they stand perpendicular to the stem. Like so. And then I tie in the ankle. Three wraps should be fine and cut off the excess like so at this stage I'm going to color the thread with my permanent marker Do quite a long stretch and now we are going to hackle the um, we're going to wrap the hackle in the same direction as the thread that for, um, we do that for the reason that when we secure the hackle, we want the thread to pull the hackle a little bit tighter. If you do it the other way around, when you secure the hackle, um, the hackle tends to come a little bit undone. Um, so we want to prevent that. So we do a couple of wraps here. Forward, just making sure that we don't trap any fibers. And that's more than enough. Take the thread around. The thread is slightly too long, just shorten it. I'm going to 
going to secure it three times, like so. And I'm just going to turn the bobbin and cut off the excess. Now, take your whip finishing tool, pull out some thread, and do a whip finish, like so. Pull the knot tight. Then cut off the thread, like so. And the last step is to secure the thread or to protect the thread and set the thread with some some resin. So I'm just wetting the tip of my um, bobbin hole, uh, my bodkin, with some. hard as nails and I'm just distributing that around the hook around that thread right just like that and there you have it that's a um, micro bugger with a fluorescent orange bead and a black body it's exceptionally effective fly and I really urge you to tie a couple and use them in a river or in a lake or in a still water they tend to produce fish in most scenarios it's also a great pattern if you're new to a stretch of water and you just want to probe around to see where the fish are and if there are actually fish they catch trout um, they catch bass they catch grayling they catch so many different species of fish so really you can use this fly with with confidence i hope that you guys enjoyed the video and um, until we see each other again Cheers.